Thank you for joining us for the Power of Faith with David Hathaway. It is our hope that you will be inspired and encouraged by this message. We pray God's blessing upon you as you listen today. Don't forget to visit our website, eurovision.org.uk, for more information on David's ministry. In this episode, David continues teaching from the book of Acts, chapter 8, verses 1 to 4. In this passage, a great persecution arose against the early Christian church in Jerusalem, following the martyrdom of Stephen. As a result, many believers were scattered throughout the surrounding regions, except for the apostles who remained in Jerusalem. Despite the persecution, these scattered believers continued to preach the word of God wherever they went. This dispersion of believers helped to spread the message of Christianity beyond Jerusalem, fulfilling Jesus' command to take the gospel to all nations. Now, open your Bible to the book of Acts and join David for today's word. Well, I want to welcome you to today's program. And for those of you who are following the series, I'm now in Acts chapter 8, and I'm reading from the authorized version, which I must admit is my favorite, but I have to admit that (laughs) a lot of it is in what we call Old English, but I understand Old English. I learned it. (laughs) Anyway, so in the last chapter, we ended with basically the the death of Stephen and commenting on the fact that he was the first Christian martyr and uh, certainly not the last. And um, so we come into chapter 8 because uh, the last verse of chapter 7 is Stephen kneeled down, cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. And, you know, I only comment into the staff that, um, that when I was a teenager, one book that I read was, uh, if you know it, it's a famous book, Fox's Book of Martyrs. Um, and I used to ask my father how these men who were brutally killed could face death. And my father said... <laughs> helpfully to me. (laughs) He said, I don't think at the end they do feel it. I think that the Lord uh, does take away some of the pain. And I think this was the case with Stephen. He wasn't crying out and being murdered. He was being murdered, but he wasn't crying out in pain. He, He was saying that he was calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And then he fell asleep, and to me, that's beautiful. Anyway, we come on to chapter 8. And of course, the chapter 8 opens up with the critical one. This, this is one of the most critical passages in the Acts, because it says Saul, and remember at this time he had not changed his name, he was Saul, He was consenting to the death of Stephen. Um, In actual fact, um, he was apparently so close that he was holding the clothes of the men who were stoning Stephen. And it says in that first verse, at that time there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. Now, I'm finding this very, very significant. There was persecution against the church. The church at that time was in Jerusalem. And then in the next part of the same verse, it says, as a result, they were scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. So here we see, and I've uh, only in preparing for this message do I see the significance, because 
in one sense, you think that by this time the apostles are carrying the mission to the mission fields. But at this point, no. The apostles were still in Jerusalem. It was these new converts that were spread abroad, and quite widely because all the regions of Judea and Samaria. So you can see that what has happened here is that the persecution has forced the new converts to leave Jerusalem and take the message. And, you know, uh, for me, it's only a matter of days ago. I'm not speaking on a Wednesday and on the weekend, last weekend, Saturday and Sunday, I was with the Ukrainian refugees in Poland. Uh, both days I had uh, different congregations, but there was about a thousand each time that came. And the interesting thing is that it's not just that they were refugees from the war, but the fact that the leaders and the pastor said to me, David, we are here to evangelize Europe. And they've already got the message that being scattered doesn't mean just simply that you're running away. It's God spreading the message. And uh, it's not only there, but I've heard this testimony because um, I met one of the men who was with him more than 30 years ago in Belarus, uh, Belarus and in Gomel. We, we evangelized there, and I never thought that it was so big because in Brest we had thousands filling the football stadium, but we'd gone to Gommel. And I didn't know until this man told me two things. One, the incredible healing miracles that happened. You know, I, don't, I see some of them and record them. I don't see the full impact. And this is 30, 35 years later, and they're saying, oh, David, did you know about that crippled man uh, carried him with his crutches and God instantly healed him? He threw away his crutches and walked 20 kilometers home. That for a cripple. And not only that, he said, David, as a result of that one crusade, we opened 50 churches, 50 churches. Oh, I thank God for those days. And in a way, I'm so glad I didn't know all the news. <laughs> it's just wonderful after all these years to know. Anyway, so... What we're looking at, and we're still on, on chapter 8 of the Acts and the first verse, they were, the, the new converts were scattered abroad, but not the apostles. And in verse 2, we come down to the very practical issue because devout men, not the apostles, devout men carried Stephen for his burial and wept over him. But in verse 3, Saul made havoc. I like that word in the English. That's why I like this, this version. He made havoc of the church. That uh, To make havoc is you cause enormous problems. I can't think of a word more descriptive in the English. You make havoc. Yeah, that meant there was great trouble. Havoc of the church entering into every house and taking men and women and committing them to prison. So this was going on at that moment. It's going on in Jerusalem. But in verse 4, the result was all this meant that they were scattered abroad and went everywhere preaching. <laughs> I, I just love this. Exactly what I was saying. They went everywhere preaching the word. And, you know... <sighs> This, this, I suppose this is the origin, really, of the, of the explosion of the mission following Pentecost. But this is such a challenge to all of us, not to look on um, even uh, uh, running away from war or fleeing because of persecution and so on, but it should give us simply an opportunity to spread the gospel, and they did. During December, David met with spiritual leaders in Ukraine. He prayed with, and ministered to, a group of military chaplains. 
2,500 people filled the largest Pentecostal church to absolute capacity to pray for the total victory of Ukraine. All David's life, he has been following a powerful, prophetic vision. Hearing God's voice behind him, saying, this is the way, walk in it. And now, as David explores Paul's letter to the Ephesians, in his new book, Power, Your Inheritance, the book of Ephesians explored, David is seeing more clearly what God's ultimate plan is for us to fulfill. It is by revelation of the Holy Spirit that step by step, all his life, David has lived the miracles of the Bible. Now, take your Bible, open it to Ephesians, and follow David through the revelation he has received and wants to share with you. Order David Hathaway's book, Power, Your Inheritance, the book of Ephesians explored by visiting eurovision.org.uk forward slash shop. Thank you for listening to the Power of Faith broadcast with David Hathaway. We would love to hear from you. Contact us by visiting eurovision.org.uk. Also available online are many free teaching resources to help you on your walk with God. David has written many faith-building books to encourage and inspire. Order these online today. Each month, David ministers online and in person. Our ministry is only possible because of the faithful support of so many people. For details on our evangelism and humanitarian relief work, visit eurovision.org.uk. Thank you again for listening.